Okay, um, this tutorial is basically how to get text into your XNA game. Needless to say, if you come from Windows programming or console, most of these things can be achieved with one line of code. Unfortunately, this is XNA and this is games programming. Life isn't going to be quite as simple as that. Um, the first thing we actually need to do is we need to actually provide a font. Uh, you don't immediately have access to any fonts where you've been used to maybe clicking on a set of properties and getting the information in. It's not quite that simple now. What we need to do is we need to create a font file. It's something that allows us to say what sort of font XNA should create. Right? It's a dynamic process. Um, you effectively create a font of a particular size um, and then that is incorporated into your program. So to do that, we create what's called an XML configuration file. Fortunately, because we're using XNA, it does make things a little bit easier because we can just create one very quickly using um, right clicks and a few mouse clicks. So it's not too bad. So before we can put anything on the screen, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the content project and we're going to right click on it. Now at that point, we're allowed to add a new item. Okay. So clicking there will then give us an option of a bitmap file, an XML file, an effect file, or a sprite font. So we're going to be creating a font, and now all we do is we click on there, and then give the font a meaningful name. So for the moment I'll use game font. Okay, it's not necessary to actually put the word font on it as well, but it's just because I like to be able to structure things that way. So clicking add at that point, what it's done is it's created, first of all, a file, which is a text file in our game content project, which is XML. Now, for you, you don't need to be an XML whiz to actually be able to use it. The things that you need to know is that each of these things in here is a configuration option, and changing the values inside each of these elements will allow us to configure how our font's going to look. So, it starts off with a particular font. Um, we can modify that to any Windows font that we've actually got on our system. So I'm going to use the traditional Arial font. So that's changed the, the font structure. And then we can specify what size it is. If you want multiple size fonts, you can either scale them or you can actually define them directly. I would suggest that if you're organised about things, you'll create one for each scale. So a normal 12 point font. Um, we're not going to mess about with spacing. You'll see there are other things on there as well. Kerning is about how the letters are spaced together. Style, you know, you can do bold, italic, etc. Um, alongside that, there are some character region controls. Realistically, you won't need those. What we're actually looking at is that it gives you a basic alphabet that you can use in your display. Okay? So at that point, all we need to do is save it. So clicking save, and then we won't be doing any more with that from this point onwards. The file's complete, no more changes to be made. Now, because you've created this game font, it's become an asset. All right, This is why you're creating it in sample game content. And it has an asset name of game font. So whenever we want to work with that, we now refer to it as game font. Right, so that's all the preparation work done. What we now need to do is we actually need to be able to use that font. And it's a simple process. We have to have an object to hold it. We have to be able to load the data into that object. And then we need to be able to use it when we're drawing the font on the screen. So it's a series of steps. So we'll start with the most simple and obvious step. Create an object. Okay, so there is an object type sprite font. Okay. So, and we can give it whatever name we like. Uh, we'll just call it Game Font for a minute to keep consistent with the name. Okay. So at that point, we've declared that Game Font is going to hold an object of type Sprite Font. Okay. Uh, we can't do anything with it yet. The next thing we have to do is we actually have to load that font into that object. So we go on to Load Content, create ourselves a new line. All right, so we're assigning the data to game font. So game font equals, and then we're going to use a feature of XNA, which is called the content pipeline. And basically, to use it, you type content, 
and then because you want to get something from the system, load. And then what you say is what type of objects are we loading? So we're open, we're loading a sprite font. Okay, so in the chevrons you put sprite font. At the moment, the next thing we need to do is because it's a method, we have to put a bracket. And then as you can see there, the online helps already said, you type in, in a string that is the asset name. So the name of the asset. So in speech marks, because it's a string. Right, game font. And close the bracket. So that line there is basically at the start of your game, it's going to load in that font and put it into the game font object. So at that point, we have now have a font that we can use. Now to draw it on the screen is fairly simple. It's only one line of code, but we do need to add a little bit extra in there as well. So draw is where we do everything in our game. So at the moment, this is based on the previous example that I did. So we've got a black screen. Okay. What we're now going to do is we're going to be able to draw stuff on the screen. Before we can do that, the way X and A works is there's a, a system called sprite batches, which means that there's a block writing to the screen. You build up a series of commands, and then right at the point of drawing, X and A will then automate that task. So to do that, we create a sprite batch based on the object that we created earlier in our code. So sprite batch object begin method. Okay. Sprite batch and method. Okay, so inside there, between those two commands, we can put all sorts of drawing commands that are related to X and A. Uh, realistically, we're not doing 3D, but we will be doing 2D graphics, so you'll be able to draw images in there, put fonts in there, and you can put multiple commands. So sprite batch is our control, it's a way of actually putting things in to say these are the things we want to appear on screen. So, there's two main commands that we use. The one we're using today is sprite batch dot draw font, which allows us to put text on the screen, but there is also draw, which allows us to put images on the screen which we'll talk about in a, another section. So, right batch, draw string. Now, the moment you click a bracket onto the screen, you'll see that there are six different varieties of options you can put at the end of here. Okay, For the purpose of what we're doing today, I think you'll find, and quite consistently, you'll find that the most basic one works fine for sprite font. There are other ones that allow you to rotate the text, another one that allows you to scale it. Okay, If you click on the little arrows yourself, you'll be able to see there are different ones that get longer and longer as we go along. All right? As you type, you'll see it will highlight and explain what each thing is supposed to be. Okay, So, option one simple sprite font. So the name of the sprite font that we've created was game font. Okay, so that's the font that we're going to use. The next thing is what are we actually going to put on the screen? So predictably, hello world. Okay. And then finally we need to locate the position of this thing on the screen, top left hand corner. Okay. So to do this we're going to create a new Vector2 object. A vector2 is an x and a y coordinate for you. Okay, where you specify in this case an x, I'm going to use 20 and 20 again and a y. Okay, and then finally we can specify what color we want our font. So because it's a black screen. We're just going to go with white for the minute. Close the bracket. Turn the color on. Okay, so at this point, what we've done is we've used draw string, which is basically put in a font that we've already loaded. That's the string we're going to put in there. We could have put space in there. In fact, that's better for consistency. 
we've created a vector to to say where on the screen it's going to appear and finally what colour it's going to be. All things that we do in X and A are referenced from the top left hand corner of the screen. Right, at that point we've completed our code. If you run your program now, you'll find that you've now got your text on the screen. Right, you can put multiple draw fonts in there, you don't have to just have one. Um, just bear in mind the size of your font and the spacing, that's all. Um, in the next tutorial I will show you a pre-written class that I've done that will simplify a lot of what we're trying to do. So here's another one. move it along in the X and we can move it further down in the Y. We'll move it quite a bit down the screen. Bearing in mind the screen at the moment is uh, 800 by 600. So run the program again. Okay, hello world tutorial. Right, that's pretty much it for drawing on the screen. For the moment everything's going in your main class. Please remember that there are better ways of doing this. This is purely for demonstration purposes. Last thing I want to point out to you is that if for some reason you don't load your content um, you will get an error when your game runs that will effectively uh, say something is null. Right? It's often quite confusing to students and the other warning I'm going to give is if you start running your game in full screen it can cause problems when you switch back to the desktop to try and fix the problem. Okay so while you're experimenting it may be better just to keep your game in a window. Just to quickly demonstrate that if I go to load content and just comment out game font okay, and run the game again what you'll find now is the game will crash. Okay, grey screen, use, use the new keyword to create an object, object instance. It doesn't really help you an awful lot, but if you actually look very carefully, it'll tell you where things have gone wrong. Parameter name, sprite font. So if you actually look back at the parameters that were on the thing originally, you'll realise the sprite font is this first bit here. And you can see when you hover over it that the game font is null. Okay, so that's a little thing to look out for. When you get in that situation, first thing to do is to stop your program running. Okay, and go and check that you've actually either spelt this correctly or that you've actually remembered to load your game font. Okay, and that's the end of the tutorial.